Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a 16 by 20 inch canvas, soft blue sky over a beautiful farm, grassland, and the cutest little cow you ever saw, just trying to get inside the gate, right? I know you're excited about painting this painting, that's why you clicked on the link. So, check the description down below, find all the colors you need, make sure you get your canvas nice and wet, get ready to throw some paint on it, we're gonna do it just like this. Oh my heck, how did we get here? I might as well tell you the colors that we have. Sap green, dark sienna, Van Dyke brown, which is the two browns in this one, it's different from some of our other paintings. Uh, the phthalo blue, Alizarin Crimson, Midnight Black, Titanium White, Cadmium Yellow over here, and then Yellow Ochre over here. And we're gonna get started trying to recreate a photo uh, for a client. So I'm gonna show you how we would do it. It's very much of a blue sky. So let's get that blue out on. There's a lot of white clouds in this sky though. So let's keep that in mind and we're gonna keep that area nice and clear for those clouds. So maybe there's a bit of blue down in there. Maybe there's some over here. Maybe it's up there, maybe in the corner. All depends, right? You just kind of dump it in, just randomly. That way it's not too much in some place. Now let's get rid of all the blue off that brush. I'm gonna wash that brush. All right. Now you can see we don't like to cut a lot out of the videos because I want you to feel like I'm right here with you, right? It's me and you hanging out in your painting room and I'm just showing you how to do the thing, right? Here we go, got our dry brush, dabbed it off on a paper towel down here. And let's come up and just very lightly start mixing in the sky, very lightly. We don't wanna cover up all those white areas, right? Don't wanna cover those. This one, I'm not too worried about the sides of the canvas because the client has said that she's gonna frame it anyway, so not really worried, but you guys know me, I can't just leave it like that. There we go. Just like there, a little bit of darkness up in this corner, don't wanna make it go too far. And as we blend it out, you can see with that Bob Ross liquid white that we put on the canvas, see what I mean? You get all those little dimples or you can see the ridges of your fingerprint if you're not wearing gloves, which is totally fine. You do what you want to do and I got to do what I'm going to do. There we go. Nice, soft little sky, just like that. And, and we don't even really need to add a whole lot of clouds because we left those areas unpainted. See what I mean? See what I mean, jelly beans? And the more and more and more we work down, the more it's gonna blend and it's gonna become lighter and lighter and lighter. So let's take some of that, work it in, just until it looks relatively the same as the photo. I had a nice big white patch, another bit of white patch over here, a bit of that white down there. And we can always go back and add in different things and different clouds very simply and easily. Why don't we take a fan brush for these clouds, these type of clouds, and there's really not a lot of shadow to them. There's not a lot of depth. They're very wispy, far away, just white, soft little clouds, right? So maybe let's just accentuate these white areas that are there just by rubbing in a bit of white into the, the sky, just like that. All right, maybe over here, we'll come back, we'll grab some more. And there was a few little softer bits that were over there, just very lightly, just throw them in. They don't really even have to all look the same. There's a little bit more down here. Well, the best part about a cloud is that you get all these little differences, the more and more that we're gonna mix them up, right? Which is why we like using a random amount, because then it will be random, like a, an actual cloud, right? Let's take the top corner, and stay out of your way, take the top corner, just like that. Very softly mix it up until it's almost not even there, right? Take it, you swipe it. Very soft little cloud. Back in here, just taking it, blending it down and away from the initial ridge over here. All right, so we're taking it, making our little circles, pushing it that way, just like that. Get these soft, far away little bits of cloud. All right, we don't want them to be super textured, so we're, we're working them into those lighter areas. That way they're not blending in with too much blue and they're not super thick on the canvas and we get these far off little puffs of our white, soft little cloud. Just like that, far away little things. All right, and we're gonna come in with our, our little bit of uh, far away forest, I guess it is. It's behind, a little bit of forest behind our barns and houses and tool sheds. There we go, a little blue, black, and crimson. Look at them all on the knife, just like that. All right, literally gonna mush them in, scrape it up, mush it in. Nothing to it, you gotta mix them all up. You don't wanna have that a bunch of crimson showing up when you don't need it to be, right? Now we're gonna take our biggest brush. Actually, it's, well, yeah, let's do this one. Let's take that big old giant mop of a brush over here, right? We're gonna make these far away little trees, very small, very soft, not even bigger than this whole brush, okay? We're gonna dab it into our paint just like that. 
kind of evenly disperses it across the entire brush. Doesn't need to be super thick because we're gonna add another layer on top of it, okay? So let's go right underneath that cloud back here and just start popping in and rotating and twisting and turning the brush like this. You can see my hand doing it. Just kind of adding in these real far away little bits of trees way off in the distance, right? Grab a little bit more dark so we don't start to get too light. And then back in there, you get these very far away little bits of trees. Very simply, very easily. I'm assuming they wrap around the edge of the canvas. Just like that, far away little things, saving our little area of white. Beautiful, beautiful little thing. Now we don't need them to be super thick, right? We just need that, that, that little bit of texture along the top and then the whole rest of the bottom we can take and literally make it soft just by mixing it up, just like this, like we're creating some fog. Mix, 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 mix. Bam, 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 bam. All right, pull it out flat. Not trying to let it grow too much. Just very much a soft little bit of forest way off in the distance, way back there. And then depending on how we highlight it and where we decide to start putting our grass and all that other thing, then poof, we got that. Gonna have our road come in from here. It's like a road on this painting. So let's just give ourselves the idea, right? The, the perspective. And then we're gonna have another road that goes off the side. So we have an area right here with a few little gates, all sorts of stuff. And then at least in my mind, I'll be able to tell and sort of figure out how it's gonna react, where the roads need to be, where we need to adjust, and then where we can fill in everything else, right? And if we're sitting here looking at our property from the side of the road over here, we're gonna have a lot of angles to deal with. Now, let's wash the uh, wash the, all the nasty dark paint off that brush because we probably won't end up using it. And if we don't wash it now, we'll forget and then it'll get all ruined, right? Or am I the only one that ruins brushes around here? Definitely don't wanna ruin these brushes. I'm telling you, they are too expensive. All right, now let's take the smaller version of that same brush, the half round. I don't know why one's called the foliage brush and the other one's called the half round. I don't, I don't get that, but whatever it is what it is. Okay, we're gonna wipe the majority of it off. Come over here into our green so it's not super thick and super bright. Then we can come in and tap it and kind of adjust our color, maybe bring it, brighten it up just a little bit more or bring down some of that other paint and darken it again. And come back here and just very, very lightly Start to drop on just little differences, not trying to cover all of those shadows back there, right? We don't need to cover everything. And it doesn't need to be super thick or super bright, so you can just very easily fill in our whole little section of forest back there, right? Over here, we're gonna have a nice big barn, so I'm not really gonna worry about that. But you don't wanna leave it so uncovered that you accidentally miss a spot too, right? So just go a little bit lighter over there really tapping it out because it is very far away. We don't need to see a whole lot of crazy detail. Don't want to cover up too many of the of the clouds back there, but now we can see there's a lot of depth. There's a lot of darkness in there. What's happening down in there? Why is it, what's, what, what, what hides down? What's living back there is what I want to know. What's going on? What's living way off in the distance of those little bits? Okay, let's wash that brush off so we don't forget because we tend to forget sometimes. Gotta wash it off, get it dry, make it nice, right? Okay, now we need to come in. We can almost not even see the bottom of the trees, right? Which is why I'm not worried about how far we come down back there, because we're literally gonna come in with a bit of grass. Now, which brush should we use for our grass? Why don't we use our one inch brush? I'm gonna come down, pull on some of that cad yellow, some of the yellow ochre, kind of mix them up on our brush right there. Grab the littlest bit of brown and let's make a new pile over here where we can brighten up that brown. See the difference? You got all those little different colors. So we can take a little bit more of the yellows, mix it in with that brown, just pulling down in one direction with the same brush, right? And then we can turn this brush over and come back in and start popping in far away little bits of grass that live way back there, right? Just by simply popping it in. Just like that, pop, 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 pop. You know, all these little different layers, little different levels, all sorts of different things and different little bits of color. We're not trying to cover up everything, right? We don't need to lose everything. That's not the goal. The goal is not to cover up all of our base colors or anything like that, right? The more and more that we swipe, especially with very far off grass, 
You're not gonna see the, the little petals of the grass. We're looking for color back there. We're looking for color. We're not looking for, for blades of grass so far off in the distance, right? Now we can come back just because it's a little darker than I like it. And just to make it a little different, we'll add a little bit of our cad yellow, just the cad yellow. We'll come into different areas where we know it's gonna be a little brighter than some of the other areas are. Okay, and all it does is just change it up, that little bit of color. Now we get this far off little bit of grass or meadow or wheat, whatever's growing out in front of the houses back here, right? Very cool. Okay, now we need to create our, our houses. So there's two in this one. Let's take that same dark color if we have any left. And why not? Let's grab up a bit of that. We're gonna come over on our house over here, which only goes up about halfway up the trees and put a nice flat rectangle right there. All right, little flat rectangle action. Maybe like one and a half lengths of our, of our knife. We'll come over to the front of the house, use the small edge of the knife and just like this, pop it down. We're gonna rotate over, pop it down again. Just like that, we're starting to build our little house, guys. Gotta make sure it comes down far enough, though. That way we'll have an area where we can pull out. Just like that, coming over. All right, always make the peak of your house higher than you think it needs to be, because you end up losing it sometimes. All right, now this house had like a very gray roof. It's almost like a bluish gray color. And it's very soft and very small back there. So we don't want it to become too large. But we do need it to make sense, right? Here we go, just like that. Now, we're gonna color it later on and let's make up a little bit of this kind of grayish color for the roof. So a little bit of our color mixed with a little bit of white just until we can get it gray enough where it's gonna stand out away from the body of the, of the building, right? Come over here, put in our gray roof, pop it down just like that. Cool little thing. Then we can go back and shape it and do all sorts of stuff. All sorts of stuff, right? Come back in here, pull it down, get rid of our, the overhang on the roof like that, fill it in with our dark color. Beautiful little thing. You can take the smallest bit of that. Let's see, chuck it onto the top outside just so we have a little bit of that color that overhangs the smallest bit Bam. just like that very 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 cool guys again it is a very very small house way off in the distance now we need to come in and color this guy with that gray color but that gray is a little bit more blue than anything else so let's add a little bit of blue right in here we're gonna mix that up just so again it's different right? get this bluish hue to it scrape all that up come in here drop it down then we have this very blue bit of house and then we can add our details like our windows and all sorts of stuff little grates in the front little sharp edges very simply and easily done this side over here, just like that. Gotta get it to lay straight on there. Poof. Let's see if we can't use the top, the front of the knife. There we go. Again, doesn't have to be the most perfect thing. Okay, let's see. Now we're gonna very softly and very gently start to pull from the front, the top corner, coming down and then over and away, and we can shape our little house. And the higher that we go up, the further and further and further away it's gonna become, right? Just like that soft little thing, way off. Try to make sure it doesn't look like it's sitting up on a hill, because that's not what it looks like in the photo. Just by pulling off straight, just like that. Cool little house, very neat little thing. Very neat little house. Okay, it's got a white door, so instead of scraping in a bit of black we're going to scrape away a bit of color and then scrape in a bit of white just like that right it doesn't really matter what it looks like underneath especially if we're doing a very far away thing because look poof, scrape it away just like that right come back with that blue color kind of seal in the edges of our door again and now all of a sudden got this really cool thing now this door had a it's got like little black windows 
So if we can take a little small brush and just square in a, just a little teeny window of black. That's a cool little bit right there. Looks very much like the photo. Now we'll put a one on the side, or the front anyway. Again, we're gonna come in and grab up our white. Let's see, that's where our door lives on that side over there. Again, it wasn't that big, so we're gonna come back in and shape it with that blue, send it backwards, and then come back in, get a little glob of paint. A little glob, come over here and just see if we can't create a little square with that glob. And black it out, and then all of a sudden we have this very cool, old little bit of building. At least I make it look old, there we go. It's probably a brand new house, beautiful little place. The property is fantastic. Man, just like that, straight away, get this old little thing all by swiping and pulling and this and then that. Okay, looks like there's one more little square black window right here. And then that's about the detail amount that we're gonna get. We can scrape away the blue, mix it in with that black, kind of keep it in a little square. Poof, this cool little thing, just like that. Just like that, that's very cool. All right, this has that kind of yellowy color that we had for our grass. I'm just gonna put that around the edges, pulling it out as straight as you can get it, right? All this stuff down here, we're gonna have taller bits of grass that are come up and they're gonna hide all that different thing. So that's really all we need for right there. Now let's come over, we're gonna use up a bit more of that dark color. So a bit of our black, a bit of our crimson, a bit of our blue, because we never make enough and we always have to make more which is why the paintings will never be the same because we can never make up the exact same amount of paint in the exact same amount of color again, right? Now over here, we're gonna scrape out the barn which or the workshop, which is a little bit bigger. So we're gonna use our full knife sections here, scraping away any paint that we don't want to be there. We're gonna go back at a slight angle upwards and scrape away all that stuff, just like so. Got our roof that's gonna go there, and then it's gonna cut off. And this is just shaping it out so we can see what it's gonna look like when uh, when we're there. All right, bam. Okay, now let's put in our dark bit of shadow. You gotta have some shadow underneath your, your bit of building. Otherwise it's just light color on top of light color and it just never works out. That's why the knife is shaped perfectly like that. So you can make these little designs and little things all on your own, right? Pull it down at this slight angle so it looks like it's kind of heading away from us, right? It's on an angle, this building. Pull it down, make sure it's nice and flat, right? We want it higher up. It's gotta come down and then come over at this little bit of a point to make it look straight, right? It's all about how far you let it do that. So put some darker color down there and we're gonna be in good shape with this guy right here. Again, I always seem to never make the the roof, the pitch tall enough on the on the front. All right, let's come back and make up some more of that blue with our our white and our black. Make this bluish gray mixture just like we did before on the other building. This one's gonna be a little bit brighter though. Not so crazy dull. It's gotta stand out to be close enough to the the same color that we have back here, just a little bit different, right? Now for this guy, we pulled him out over here and we came down just like that. And then we came off to the side. He has this big long shadow behind him over there. All right, gotta be very straight though. Otherwise it's gonna look like it's sitting up on top of the hill, which is not what I want. And that, we gotta sit and adjust about what it's gonna look like. There we go, get the different angles, adjust our roof so it's not so tall. Here we go. Poof, that's much better. All about the angles, right? If you don't have the right angle, it's not gonna look right when you go to pull it out. Remember, pull it out straight. Can't pull it out to the side or on a, on a downward angle like that. Okay, let's grab up some more of that little purpley color that we made for our roof, mix that in. Grab up a little bit more of that dark color, just mix it up. 
Bam. Always run out of space on this palette. Maybe it's time to get a bigger palette. Okay, we're gonna come over here. Again, grabbing it up, pulling it straight down. So we line it up with the rest of the building, just like that. And again, that's why we make these shapes. These shapes are not just for fun. We make them like that for a reason. There we go, a little shack out here. Nice little workshop. Got the edge of the building right there. Another edge in the front, obviously. Got our edge in the back, All right? You can see the building. At least I can see it. Bam, 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 bam. Poof, very cool. All right, now let's match that color. We're gonna take that blue. We're gonna come into here. We're gonna pull it straight down. Just like that, wipe it off. Come back, grab some more. Over onto this side, straight down. All right, doesn't have to be exactly the same. Doesn't have to all be covered. Not the way that we paint anyway, there we go. Nicely done. Now we need to just darken it up just a little bit more to go on to the side. So take a little bit of that dark that we had over here. It's just gotta be a little bit deeper, darker of a color is all. Just like that. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now it did have one little weird square on the top, like a, like a thing. It's like an extension of the building. But it's only right there, which is strange. It's like a ridge that goes on the top. So let's take a little bit of that darker color, put it around the bottom, create our little shadow like that. Just like that. Fantastic. All right, let our little roof blend in, right down to our edge. And just like that, we got this real cool old... All right, now this one has some ridges in the front, which may be difficult to create with the knife. So let's get that little, or real hard. It's it, like this brush has been dried and hard. I wouldn't even use it for anything else besides making like real straight, hard like indentions. We're scraping out away the paint from the, the canvas. So we leave these cool little ridges that'll look like the beams that are, you know, what the thing is made out of. It's really cool, just like that. Now we'll go down the side a few. These ones we're not gonna be able to see as much, right? So we'll scrape down the side, just in case we have any little bit of, of detail back there that we need to fix, fill in. And this guy just got a little bit too white. There we go. Just like that. All right, now we're gonna fix that and adjust the edges. We need to create the doors. So we have a whole big section in the front. We're gonna scrape out just like that. Come over here, dump in our white doors. I love that there's white doors. I'm normally painting black doors, right? Which is a more difficult thing. So I love that this one has white doors. Okay, we're gonna put in our little square windows again, same way that we did with the other guy. Right, just by kind of dropping on a little glob and then stretching it out in that same shape, filling it in just like that. I'll keep my head out the way for you. And little square windows, all filled in. This guy's got a lot of paint on. We're gonna try to transfer some of this paint over to this guy. Maybe add our doors. What else does the door look like? It's got a couple windows over here, off to the side. All right, bam, bam, bam. Just like that. This guy's almost just too much paint, so we're gonna try to remove some of this paint off of there. Now we're gonna dry like that. See if we can't take a bit of white and just shape up that door. shape up our windows and stuff, make them sort of similar. Take this guy, and really get him back to white. I hate it when that color starts to drag. It becomes a pain, right? Especially anything wants to blend in with white, so. Hence why we probably make all of our tours dark. Especially when we're painting, because it's an easier thing to do, to not have it all blend the same and end up being the same color, right? So 
There we go, a little bit of line down there. We got another door off to the side. So why don't we do one right here? Little edge, got a hole. There's like four off the side here. There we go. Now we're gonna come back in, scrape up a bit of white, just fill it in and then we can go back and edit and cover and do all the stuff that we need to do, right? Doesn't all have to look perfect on the very first swipe. Here we go. Come up here and just adjust this guy a little bit. And in the meantime, we're gonna lose all of our building. There we go. It's all about making it look like the photo, right? That's why they came to me because they liked how I painted and they want to see how it's going to turn out if we did that. Poof. Come up here, drag it down, and flat. Remember, flat, 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 Josh, flat. Can't be up on top of a hill. There we go. Not too dang bad, not too dang bad. You can just get the top. Poof. This cool little thing up there. It's very neat. Very neat. Come down here, gonna fix where our roof needs to be. Just like that. Not so easy with uh, wet paint, right? Definitely not. Definitely not. A little bit of darkness up underneath the pitch of the roof up there, right? Gotta have some darkness up there. <clears throat> All right, now we're not gonna hang around too much longer on the building itself. It looks fantastic. Drop a little piece off the edge over there. We're good to go. We are good to go. It's all about not even what it, what it, what you think it is. Just about trying to make it look how it's supposed to look. Like I don't even know what this piece is up here, but it's a ridge that sits on top of the building that uh, is there for a reason. That's not up to me why it's there. It's just there for a reason. Okay, now let's get a little bit of our grass coming in here now. Got to fill up this whole section with grass. And you see how it got a lot darker when we mixed in that, all of the dark shadows for our grass, right? We got to come down here. Remember we had that area where we're going to have those roads and then we're going to have a road off to the side. We can't forget about those. Right, this whole area is going to be road right here and it's starting to come together. It really is. Maybe we come off to the side a little bit more. The, the perspective of the photo and then your canvas are never going to be exactly the same. So it's a little, it's a little challenging, but you can get it done. I'm right, going to throw off a little bit of grass down around the edges of our, of our buildings. Tapping them in, tapping them in. The soft, the more and more and more we tap, the softer and softer they become. You can even turn your brush over if you can and just grab just a few, and drag them up every so often. Right? Doesn't have to be the whole thing, but it starts to look cool when you do it like that. Just to have a few. All right, let's see. We come in here, changing colors, more of that yellow, the cad yellow color, tapping up with the brush, right? Then dragging up with the brush. Get that cool bit of grassy look. Almost by bouncing and, and dragging up, just like that. You get these little layers of grass. It looks really neat. And all about the differences in the color and how you make it look, the swipes of your brush, right? That's how it's gonna be. There we go. That's a cool little bit of grass. Yeah, I love the difference right there. Maybe we'll take some more of that dump it into this front area, right? We'll pull up in front of those lighter areas back there. Maybe this guy, we can see the base of him. 
grow up this way. All about making it just look right. Looking right to you. How's it gonna look right if you look at it and you don't really think that it looks natural or that you would see it like that? Then how's it gonna look right to your buyer who lives there and looks at it all the time? Look at that, that's very cool. Very, very, very cool, guys. All right, now we're gonna have to come in with our fence. So we're gonna have our road. All right, let's add a little bit of that dark brown and our dark, our, our dark sienna brown too. We're gonna add in our roads right here. Just like it's going up and away. There we go. All about how we swipe it, right? We swipe it to the side, even though you wanna go down, it's not gonna look like a road unless you're looking at it flat. A little bit there, poof, 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 right? And we have this whole bit that comes up and then our road turns and goes off this way. And then there's like a bit of, uh, of grassy area down here in the front where we have our, our, our gates and all the rest of the stuff here. There we go. Just like that. That looks relatively similar to the photo to me. If you're asking, that looks pretty dang close, if you ask me. A little bit more of that darker color down in here. Swiping it over, that darker brown, right? That dark sienna brown, or the, the Van Dyke brown. Whichever brown it is. There we go. Now we'll bring in our little bit of green grass from this side. The way we're going to do that, we're going to go into our our two inch brush right into the green. Come in, tap it up. It's very bright green. Look at that, just by tapping. Tap it in, bring it over here into our dirt, right? It doesn't ever just grow in one place and just stay there. That's not grass. It doesn't just grow and stay. Not the grass I know anyway. It grows all over the dang place. So let it get there. Little differences, little darker areas, little pops. Little pops in there, little swipes up, and give you these cool little, see now we can see our little blades of grass, right? That's what we want. We wanna be able to see them down here in the front. If we're down, if we're way off in the back in the distance, we're not gonna be able to see the blades of grass back there. Or is it just me? Am I the crazy one? Am I the crazy one? Okay, a little bit of our brown. We come in, really darken up the edges where we want our, our grassy path to live. And then we'll have our whole little area right here. Poof of our road. Fantastic. Remember, it's got to be perspectively right. So it needs to extend on that same diagonal line, right? Just like that. All right. Again, she doesn't care that the canvases are finished, but you guys know me, I can't just leave it unfinished. There we go. You can see how we leave these little areas of light color around the edges of our color. Just, I don't know, there's something about it. Just gives it more distance to me or something. A little bit of darkness, kind of shadowing under the base of our our little bits of grass down in here, right? Not, maybe not everywhere, but just somewhere. Swipe those guys up, swipe over the road. Now we'll put our fence in, we'll be good. Remember, you want all your, your swipes horizontal though. Just like that, looks like the picture to me. Looks like the picture to me. Maybe our roads even need to come over a little bit more. It's not too much grass over there. There we go. Nice and soft, beautiful little things. Little bits of, of darkness in our grass too, right? It can't all just be the same one bit of color. You gotta have some shadows in there, different little things. You just mix it in with that same brown. Look at that, fantastic, fantastic guys. All right, now we need to put in our, our gates. The gates, we keep all the wildlife in, right? <clears throat> Gotta keep the wildlife in. 
Just trying to very softly with like no hairs at all go over these guys just so they become less pr uh, prominent. Just less prominent. Don't stick out so much. Less to look at. There we go. Far away little thing. Fantastic little thing. I think there's a little white building over here too, but it's like over the top of a sign. And then it's like, do you do the white building or do you not? It's like a slanted little thing that lives out here. Maybe it's an outhouse or something. Some sort of something that lives out there. Let's pull it down just to give it the right shape. And then we're gonna go over it with white. And then we're gonna fix it. That's literally what it looks like to me. Far off little white thing, little white building way off in the distance back there. But you don't know that it's a white building just based on how it is, All right? So like we'll make it go away just like that. All of a sudden it's not there anymore. What happened to the poor building? It's gone. <clears throat> All right, let's come in with our fence posts and uh, yeah, we'll be good. Okay, for our fence, Right, we're gonna end up doing it with a brush versus the knife, but I just wanna get a very thin amount and then we're gonna come across and maybe our fence lives about here. All right, it's coming across the whole photo. And it's a very thin little fence too, which is why I'm not worried about using the knife. All right, we've got our, our little beam there, got another little beam right here. Just very, very small. Little fence, All right, coming down. We're just kind of guiding it. We're, we're giving ourselves an idea on where this fence might end, what it's gonna look like when we get done. And we're just using a very, very, very small amount so that if it doesn't look right, then we can correct it easily and not have to blend a whole huge amount of paint, right? Now, let's see, it looks like it's got three, Three little lines, all right, trying to make them all equal. And to make them not too dang big either. We don't, we want them to all be very small little bits of lines, right? Nothing too crazy. Like this guy over here, he's getting a little bit too big for his britches. Right, even take and swipe them, make them very soft. Very soft, little bit of fence back here. All right, that'll at least give us an idea on what we can do and what we have to do to fix it if we need to. Changing our perspective or bringing it up or bring, making it thicker, doing all sorts of things. All right, we got a whole nother line underneath. Which comes from over there. That whole little thing, just the smallest little bit of paint though, because we don't need a whole lot. All we really need to do is get it lined up and let it roll off the knife. That's really it. Get it lined up and let it roll off. It'll look like a really old little fence back there. Real old little fence. Okay, three levels and then we're gonna go down and each one of these is like a crisscross pattern. So it's very small. Just kind of dropping in my lines right now. All right, that's a lot of our detail right there is uh, just in the fence post itself. All right, over here. Just trying to line them up. Now, a lot of these are like so thin that you can't even see the fence posts. You know what I mean? Like it's like wire. And it's a lot of this. So we're gonna try just to very lightly make our strokes up and down, straight as we can every so often, going back, grabbing more paint, coming back, getting more, and then we'll have this very, almost real hard to see like wire bit of fence. Just like that. 
right? And, and we're using like the smallest amount of paint we could possibly use just to get it to line up and look like a little mesh fence on there. And let me tell you, that is a lot. Scrape off that whole big amount. Can't have too much. Oh man. I don't know that we're gonna do that on the other ones. Maybe we gotta do it a little bit. Just a little bit more. Flatten out that paint, scrape up a little section, right? There's our big beam. So we gotta come in with our little hashtags. Just like that. And again, they don't all even have to be the same. Poof, cool little thing. Cool little bit of fence. This thing is so hard to even see in the photo that it's, uh, it's a miracle that it's even there. Right, here's our bottom of our fence. Take our bit of pole. Now, if we can just shape this guy. Nice and soft, just like that. Come over here. Shape our edges. Just with our filbert brush is all. And all we're doing is just moving the paint that was on the canvas before. Right, making our soft little bit of gate. That's all we're really doing. Just like that, just like that. Over to the edge. That's really it. Ooh, I'm gonna add a little bit of black now just to darken everything up, just a touch. Nice, soft little thing. And a lot of times you can use these filbert brushes as an eraser if you get there close enough. Just like that. Erase that whole section in there. I don't know why it does it, if it's just the, the way that it's made or the shape or the way that the bristles are, I, don't, I do not know. There we go, soft little bit of fence. Straight as we can get it, of course. Of course, as straight as we can get it. We don't want to have it all crazy. There we go. Fix that. Got our whole thing right here. Yeah, that's a cool looking fence. It really is. here just to make it just straight enough come back in with that little connector line and just bring it down that is a cool looking little bit of fence guys all right now we got one pole over here right next to this sucker right and then we have another bit of fence that rides up higher and comes off this way and that guy comes down, right? They almost touch. And then he comes off at this angle down that way. So angles though, most important. Can't have it be so crazy. There we go. That is better. Right, which is again why we're not really worried about using the whole heck of a lot of paint or anything like that because we can always come back and just very simply bring it back to where we had it, right? Now, let's get a little bit of that black and white, sort of make a grayish color right, right here on the brush. Just like that. Bring down our little bit of fence with that gray color. Come up, a little bit more black. 
just to darken it. Right, and there we go, there's our fence. Now this guy's got a little bit of a beam in him. And then these are just long rounded bits. Right, you guys all know that kind of fence. Everybody knows that kind of fence. Everybody knows the fence Josh is talking about. Damn. It's like where this one, I think it's this one that even opens or swings. This one doesn't look like it swings according to the photo. It may look like that according to the painting, but in the photo, I think I got that backwards. I think this is the swinging one. Just like that, guys. Now there's a pole back behind that pole. It's one of those rounded gates. There we go. The gate. Get to the gate. Just like that. Perfect. Okay, let's do this one little bit of pole back here. We could have done it before we did the fence. We can always redo it. It's about as thick as the, the filbert brush right through there. And then we're going to come back. It's got mostly white. So let's go back, put a little bit of white, a little bit of white. Right, it'll look like this rounded pole that's sitting out there. It has to be white though. I can't let it over mix. It's gotta be pretty white. Poof, just like that. That's why we put that dark side down underneath. Let's take a little bit of blue because the center of that guy is blue. A little bit more white for the top. A little bit of a pole back there, right? These paints, though, they just want to mix together all the time, so you have to be careful about letting them mix together, right? Just like that. A little bit of white pole. Now we're gonna go back to that darker color, our black and gray that we did for this guy. Turn our brush upside down, and just over any bit, we're gonna cover over that bit of pole, push him backwards. And poof, like now he's behind the, the grass. You can take the smallest little bit, dab in where, his, where he meets the grass so it's not so harsh, right? Right in there, get our, our fence back to normal. Poof, we got this little bit of a thing back behind there. I love these little bits of fence. They're very much, very cool. All right, now, there's a big old cow that sits in this painting. I've never done a cow before. So maybe we should take a break. Really try to study the cow. We can put our big bit of tree in up here. Let's do that. A little bit of black, a little bit of brown, or darker browns, right? Two browns, crimson black. Just mix them all up so we get this nice dark thing happening. And then we'll come over here on the side right out here and then out pops this bit of tree. It just comes out from the edge of the painting. Just like that. Cool little bit of tree. Never see the trunk, barely see any branches. Just some tree, just some tree. I wish I knew what the base looked like. I was gonna try to paint the base into it, but we don't know what it looks like. Okay, here we can be much brighter, much greener. All right, but we still, again, don't want to cover everything. So stay away from the bottom or the very back back here. We got to have those deep, dark colors. What's great about trees on these edges, you can go out just over the edge of your shadow with a little bit of green. Poof! Now everything's much brighter than it was, right? Very cool. Again, not trying to cover everything. Want to leave those dark areas. Don't have to have it be all green. And just have it get those nice, deep, dark areas. Lovely. You can add them back in if you wanted to. If you didn't cover up too much, go back, grab up some of that darker paint, add them back in. Bam. Nice little thing, right? It's like a plane. You just don't want to go too many times. You go green, leave it, right? Don't mess with it too much. Fantastic. All right, <clears throat> I'm going to take a break and uh, we're going to send the buyer a photo without the, the, the cow and see what they think. And uh, yeah, it's going to be fantastic. Look at that. 
Fantastic, right? Really blend out underneath. We can take a bit of that darker color and our black and everything else and add a lot of bit of texture to our road down in here. And then when we go and pull that out, that's gonna give us all these dark colors all mixed up and messy. Right, we get our road starts to get darker as we come over here. All these little messy bits of, of land or mud, shadows, all sorts of stuff happening. Really cool, really like that. All right, guys, well, we're gonna do the cow. And we'll see if it's gonna ruin it and that we have to redo this canvas, right? Okay, just trying to be perspectively how it is right as we see it. It's got its head. It's very much just a shadow of a cow in the photo. So we're gonna drop its head down, right? And then underneath its nose, he comes over like this. It's all about making shapes, right? Coming down, filling in. Then he's got his leg. It just looks like it's a three-legged cow. Of a strange shaped leg, just like that. That's all it is, man, making shapes. All right, we're gonna come underneath for his belly. He goes up into the other leg, which is the back leg. It goes off this way. I right, don't wanna make it too big. And then the leather leg is off to this side. Like a little bend, something sort of like that. Now we're gonna fill all this guy in now. All it is is a shape. So you just gotta complete the shape, cover everything else behind, and then we'll have ourselves a cow. Now when I'm telling you, this cow is so hard to see. I'm not even kidding. It's like a black cow, and it's very, very difficult to see the dang thing. All right, now that we got him filled in, like you can't see any any definition, you can't see anything on this poor cow. See, it's like so much in the shadow. Right, we're gonna come out, and then his leg goes like that. And we'll just fill it all in, shape it back. It's a funky looking cow, but it is what it is right now until we fix him, right? Until we fix him and make him sort of look like a cow. Gotta wash the brush. Let's see. All right, and if it doesn't look like a cow, then we tell the lady, hey, we just can't do it the way that you want it done. And uh, it's just not gonna work out like that. And then we'll just have to see from there, right? If we can't do it, then we can't do it. It's more like a bison. Make sure his legs are sticking out the right way. And then we got this old little cow. Super cute little guy. Okay, we really need to make him black though. Let's see if we can't fill him in like that. Because again, he's just a poor old black cow out there. Poor old black cow. There's his head shape, right? Sort of. Got his ear that goes off over there. His head comes down. Makes his little nosy. That looks like a cow to me. Take a little bit more of our black and just pipe him in with black. He's really gotta be dark. So this cow is probably gonna be the longest drying cow in Paint With Josh history, right? Just the longest cow that ever took to dry. Just because he's got so much paint on him. There we go. Shape his belly. Nasty old black cow. Just like that. And she said, if anything, just make it a silhouette. So I said, you got it. Now let's take a little bit of that yellow. We're gonna come in here, see if we can't make like a little yellow square of a tag off his ear. Just like that. Just like that. We get a little bit more of the brown in here. 
if we can't get a little black underneath just to even have the littlest bit of shadow or something to separate his head. See what I mean? Gotta separate that old head. Try to make him very soft. And again, we've never done a cow before, so it sort of is what it is, right? How can it be what it ain't? That's what I always say. Can't just be what it isn't. There we go. Poof, far away a little bit, a little bit of cow back here. Right, just like that. Well, that's it right there. And I'm telling you, it's a three-legged cow. If you look at the photo, it is a three-legged cow. Maybe his leg needs to be a little bit longer. Just a touch. Just a touch, just a touch more soft. Just so it's very much paint with Josh, right? Poof, this very cool thing. All right, I'm not gonna touch this anymore. We're gonna tell the buyer it is done and it is ready and I'm never doing a cow again in my life. But I think it turned out pretty good. So hopefully they like it. And uh, you know, we won't have to redo it, right? And a little bit more darkness to his face down here. A little bit more darkness to the face. If we can't do around the nose, maybe just a little bit of like different colors, some shine, some sort of something out on the edge of his nose. Maybe put a couple little bits of black in there for his nostrils. Just for the people that are really looking hard, right? Get a little shine on the nose. All right, well, this was a fun one for sure. The first little animal that we've done. And it doesn't look too perspectively bad according to the photo. Uh, on the cow anyway, right? First cow we've done, probably the last cow we'll ever do. Unless we do one like way off in the distance, right? So. Uh, I want to thank you for tuning in and watching, and I have a mountain of brushes to go clean up and get cleaned up myself, so uh, until I see you again next time, we have live shows on Friday, we have shows on uh, Sunday morning, Friday night, Wednesday when you're watching this one, uh, and if not, check in with Paint With Josh on Facebook, and I'm probably live right now. Even though you're watching this this morning, I'll probably be live later on in the afternoon, just because we love going live, and, and it's just fantastic. So uh, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in and you know, you guys take care. Have the rest of a good day until we see you Friday, Sunday, or whenever. Take care and ba pow! Right? It's a lovely, everybody loves the ending noise. Ba boom! All right, we'll see you guys later. Bye.